So let's talk a little bit about why this is safe for the shoulders and how we can do it correctly to ensure that we don't impinge the shoulders, right? So when we're starting in the rack position, we're gonna squeeze those shoulder blades back, lift the chest and stack the bar on top of the forearm and the elbows are gonna stay tight, resting on the lats. When we go into full lockout, let's show with JD. Let's get into the rack position. Good, everything's tight, quads are tight, trunk is tight. He's stacking his elbows down on his lats, okay? Elbows are always in front of the bar and the wrists are gonna be at about 20 degrees of extension. And the bar is gonna be setting in the base of the palm. When he goes into full lockout overhead, he's gonna shrug real big with his scapulas, all right? Shrug real big with his upper traps. And that is gonna do what? You can rest, relax. What is that gonna to do to the scapula, shoulder blades? Right, it's going to adduct them and upwardly rotate or superiorly rotate them. So it's gonna take the fossa, what we call the glenoid fossa, and it's gonna point it straight up to the ceiling. And it's gonna raise the acromion, which is the roof of the glenohumeral joint. It's gonna raise the acromion up and clear the joint. Well, the acromion is usually what impinges the what? Rotator. rotator cuff, the humerus, the insertion of the rotator cuff musculature, okay? The common insertion of the rotator cuff. So by shrugging big at the top, let's do that again. By shrugging big at the top, JD is then able to open that joint and face that fossa up towards the ceiling. When he does that, the acromion lifts up. Okay, there's no impingement occurring and the humerus can go into the fully flexed or extended position just like that. Make sense? So with a healthy shoulder, let's, let's make sure we put this in frame of reference. With a healthy shoulder and someone that actually has a cuff too, is this an impingement position for the shoulder, if done correctly? The answer to that question is no, it's not an impingement position. Now, Rip and I have talked about this several times, if you have someone that has no cuff, okay, all right, and they can't stabilize the humerus in the joint, okay, then they may have some pain with this, okay? So you have to gauge that client by client and make sure that they're getting really, really good shrug at the top all right, of the motion to clear that joint, clear that opening, okay? Does that make sense? That's why it's safe for the shoulder. I have all my rotator cuff patients, they start with a press progression in a set of rings with PVC or a wood dowel and rings and they start pressing overhead as soon as the surgeon will allow me to. And sometimes earlier, you can erase that from that please. <laughs> okay, but my rotator cuff patients, when they're discharged from me, which is usually about eight to 12, usually about 12 weeks after surgery, three months after surgery, because that's about as long as we get to keep them, are pressing weight overhead. And I don't know any other therapist in town that's got their folks pressing barbell weight overhead. Maybe just pressing the bar, maybe pressing a 35 pound bar, or, you know, but they are pressing a bar overhead. Okay, yes. Well, 12 weeks with me, they're lifting load overhead. 12 weeks with most other protocols or techniques, they're doing rotator cuff work down here, and they may be pressing a dumbbell overhead, a light dumbbell, a five pound dumbbell. And I've got my male patients will usually be pr pressing 65 pounds usually at 12, 12 weeks. I think that varies from patient to patient. You know, pain is not the limiting factor at that point. It's just lack of strength at that point. But that varies from patient to patient during the post-op period. You know, how durable are they? But I'm, I'm six months post-op and I'm gonna press 170 today. And I'm six months post-op of a four anchor cuff repair. Labor repair, AC joint resection, subacromial plasty. So. Can I go partial with them first? I think you said the rings and the dowel. Is that a partial range of partial press? You know, it matters how well, how much pain they have. Yeah, but I might do the upper portion of the range where they can get really good elevation at the top and then work my way down. It's harder for them to come off the bottom and go up 
than it is to work the upper portion of the range. And Rip shows that in the video that he does on the press progression with the rings. Yeah, because at the top, all they have to do is just shrug and be there, shrug and be there. And the cuff is a lot like, less active at the top too, okay? It's that bottom portion of the range where the supraspinatus really works hard to pull that humerus down into the joint. Got it? Good. All right. So we're going to go through the press progression. First thing we're going to do is set the rack height, mid sternum. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the grip width and the position. So on this, we want to make sure that we set the grip width fairly narrow. Basically, we want to make sure that the fulcrum or the moment arm, moment arm between the shoulder and the grip is not too wide. So I think about the index finger being right in front of the shoulder joint. So it's gonna be narrower than a lot of guys think it's supposed to be. When we take a grip on the bar, we're gonna bring the elbows outward and we're gonna place the bar in between the web space of the thumb and index finger and at the hypothenar eminence, the base of the palm right there. So you're gonna grasp the bar, grip the bar with both sides. He's going to spin the bar around and bring the elbows underneath the bar without losing that position. A lot of trainees, what they'll do is they'll end up doing that, and you gotta watch for that, okay? Now we've got this extended wrist, we don't want that. We wanna stack the bar on the base of the palm right there, okay, on the ulna, see that? So regrip that for us. Keep the wrist in extension, just a little bit of extension, good, and stand up with the bar. Now. Ideally, what we would like to do is have that bar resting down here, if we could, but that's not going to happen with JD. That's fine. So elbows are in front of the bar, okay? Elbows are in, tight, stacked on the lats. The chest is lifted, and everything's tight. The quads are tight. Trunk is tight. He's ready to roll. Now what he's going to do is he's going to try to press the bar from the rack position towards his nose, back over his head into full lockout. So press and big shrug at the top. Big shrug, okay, bar should be slightly behind the ear, there we go, and back down to the rack position. Good, does that make sense? All right, yes? Can you talk about what's going on with JD's body that the bar is gonna sit a little bit higher based on his anthropometry and mobility? Well, it's his anthropometry, but it's also the fact that he has a lot of mass and he has a lot of bicep here and the elbow's just not gonna bend any farther than that. It's the forearm length, it's everything, yeah. All right, let's rack the bar, walk all the way into the rack, set the bar down. Don't try to set the bar into the rack, walk into the rack, let it hit the uprights, and then just squat the bar down, okay? Don't ever take the bar from the top and bring it down into the rack, okay, like that. Bring the bar back down to the rack position, the shoulder, walk it in, set it down. All right, now what we're gonna do, we've already taught him the rack, and the lockout, and now we're going to taught him, teach him how to use his hips. And he's going to put his hands on his hips to start with. And we're going to teach him how to use the hip drive, okay? On the hip drive, what he's going to do is he's going to send his hips forward, and his thighs should move in what direction? Forward. His thighs should move forward. If he does this, is this hip drive? What is that? Lumbar, it's lumbar extension. And this opened up too, right? This should not open up. This should stay tight. It's like pulling a bow and then releasing it, right? Pulling a bow and boing, releasing it back, okay? It should be that explosive. So we're gonna work on driving his hips forward to the wall and the thighs should move forward with it and then coming back quickly. Because that's what's gonna give us a bounce with the bar, okay? And we're gonna see that in just a second and get the bar drive moving, okay? All right, hands on the hips. And we're gonna do, let's just do three of them to start with, okay? And ready, and hips, good. And hips, faster. And stay in the middle of the foot, right? Because the bar is gonna be in the middle of the foot the entire press. Okay, so it needs to stay in the middle of the foot. And hips, good. And look straight ahead, good. Hips, okay, good. All right, so now let's go to the bar. Get your grip. And we're gonna have him do, we'll just do three with the bar at in the rack position, okay? Now watch what happens to the bar when he does this. Look straight ahead, JD, and go. Good, and go. Good, and go. Good, what's happening to the bar? It's bouncing, right? The bar is bouncing down and up. 
Okay, so this time what we're going to do is we're going to do hips and then press. Okay, and where are you going to press the bar? Behind you. Behind you, back towards your nose, right? And so to do that, what's he got to do with his head? Yeah, he's going to get it out of the way, but the, the lean back a little bit and the hips forward are going to get the head out of the way. He drives it back over to the nose, right? If it hits your nose, that's okay. You only do that a couple times. All right, here we go. We're going to do th three of these. Ready? And go. Good. Lock out. Middle of the foot. Good. And go. Good. Big shrug at the top, though, for me, okay? And there you go. Elbows in front. And go. Big shrug, good, and relax. Good, walk the bar into the rack. Good, squat it down. Good, does that make sense? Yeah? Great. Now, if you see that his elbows are dropping, okay, or that he's pressing the bar out in front of him, he's not getting a good bar path, correct that during this process, all right? Correct that. Make sure he's staying tight, that you don't have any power leaks in the press off the hip drive. Timing is the key to this. Timing's the hardest thing to get down. Just hips and then press. Hips and then press. Yeah. Got it? Teaching progression that he had him just practice the hips without putting the bar Correct. up third, so you want yes. us to do that. Yeah, and here's why. Because it's really, really common for what we don't want to see is when they do the hips, have the bar go back and forth. So when the hips go forward, the bar comes down. So it goes down, up, not back that way. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, so in the same way. So we're going to get a bounce and make sure the bar is kind of going down and up, down and up, down and up, then down and press. Got it? Got it? Okay, you're up. Okay. Don't worry about, come back to the start position, don't worry about making that hip thrust fast. Instead, right now, think about it being long. Reach, press. Try that. You are pressing early. back to the start position. Just do the bounce part. No press, just bounce. Elbows forward, every time you're gonna have to reset it. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Boom, do that. And again, one more. Bounce. Feel when the bar's coming up, and then bounce. So that's when you start to press it, right? I can walk around the fuzzy hand. Don't look down. <laughs> yeah, just the bounce bar. Ready? Bounce. Okay, so you press it when that bar starts to come back up. Okay, try it. Try bounce and press. Yes! That's exactly it. That's the timing. And back to the start position. Again, bounce and press. Perfect. Again. Doubles forward. Fine, good. See where this interacts with the heel of my palm? I'm gonna put my fingertips into the barbell. Okay. Not fingernails, fingertips yeah. into the barbell. I will keep this configuration as I spin the barbell to get my elbow underneath. Note that I did not let it get back into my knuckles right. like you did, okay? Right. It needs to stay in contact right here because this is where you drive force from. Right. When Chuck Norris does a heel strike, Right? He does it with the heel of his palm. That's what you're going to do with the barbell. You're going to heel strike the barbell, okay? okay. Be Chuck Norris. Wear the denim jeans. <laughs> you know, with the denim jacket. <laughs> now, if the elbow gets behind, what's happening to the moment arm? Have you tried to hold a bar like that with the anterior deltoid and the bicep? It's impossible. So, as you're, and, and especially when you come down the bottom, if your elbows drop behind, you gotta reset, and see you reset. Get ready for the next round. Is that also coming down, come down and out? You would finish the work out on the way up instead of keeping them under. Yeah, I mean, the, the drive of the press is built off the elbow and the shoulder. So the elbow should stay fairly in the front of the bar. In the front of the bar, press the bar, and as you're getting farther up, the bar clears the head, then the elbows come out. When you come down, the elbows are out, but right back in the front. Right back to the starting position in the rack. Put your eyes forward. Stop pulling the bar down. Shoot your hips. That's better. Now do that again and keep the bar close. Think about throwing it behind you. Better. Hips. More hips. Big hips. So the danger is. Down is, you know, the 
understand that the elbows determine the trajectory of the bar, right? Right. So to the extent that you can, you need to keep them up high as you're going through and, and initiating the press. If you allow them to drop behind you, or behind the bar rather, you're likely to end up pushing it away from you. So that's why I'm right here and initiate from the hips. Your, like your belt buckle, pretend there's a wall six inches in front of you and reach forward and touch it. Right, or your bladder, or your belly button, or like you know, some part of your like your midsection of your anatomy, and touch the wall ahead of it to get enough movement. You can actually video yourself from the side and see how much forward movement you get there. It's really common, like when it's light, people don't get a lot, you know, they'll get a lot of movement. As it gets heavy, they get less movement and less movement. But that's actually when you need more movement because you'll get a bigger bounce and press. Okay, thank you, man. Yep.